Hey guys, it's Bradley. Welcome back to my channel, Portland Gentleman. In today's video, well, I'm kind of late. Truthfully, I've been sitting on this footage for several months. I'm making a Lutra hard seltzer with all the fanciest ingredients. Well, it's corn sugar and uh, that, that Lutra yeast, as well as the uh, Omega hard seltzer uh, nutrient that honestly works really good. I'm gonna give that away right now. I've also had my hands on this jaded hydro chiller for quite a while. I'm gonna review that as part of the video. So if you'd like to learn even more about home brewing and home brewing equipment, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. As with all grain brewing or any brew for that matter, water is key. I'm building from reverse osmosis water, adding in my necessary additions to get the water profile I desire. Next, I'm just waiting to hit 185 degrees. That's when I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to put all the corn sugar into my brew tools B80 Pro. I've always found it to be kind of a pain in the ass to get the corn sugar out of the bag. How do you guys debag this stuff? What's the best way? Uh, I'm using scissors here. I don't know if it's the best, but it definitely works. I always make a mess and it's just, it's just pain in the ass to work with. So let's talk about this Jada chiller. What makes it special compared to other immersion chillers? Truthfully, I have never used an immersion chiller before. This guy actually has three chillers in one. That's kind of the secret sauce here. The water comes in and it goes into three separate lines. You get greater flow, there's less resistance. That's kind of the magic. It's put together nicely. It's solid copper. All the coils are wrapped by hand. It is just a lovely chiller. It honestly works great. In my B80 Pro, I would not go with the Hydra, I don't think. This one, the coils are a little bit too, uh, too tall for me. I think they have one that just came out recently. That's a lower profile. I think that'd be a lot better option in my B80 Pro. Other systems may vary, but honestly, this thing is a beast. It just does not disappoint. The only downside to this in my mind is cleaning. You do have to kind of make sure you get all the gunk out of the coils. Other than that, if you're into an immersion chiller, I really recommend this Jaded Hydra. It worked great as, uh, as advertised. It comes with all the connections you need to hook it up to your garden hose and you're good to start chilling your wort instantly. Here we are dropping in the Jaded Chiller Hydra. I'm gonna boil it in for the length of the boil, which I boiled this for about 10 or 15 minutes. And yeah, just uh, put it in there to get it all sanitized and cleaned up. Right before this step, before I started cooling after my super short boil, I decided it was time to take a quick gravity reading to make sure everything was on track. I grabbed the brand new Anton Par Easy Dents and sucked up a little bit of the sugar water because it's not wort and ran that through the Easy Dents. It took a super quick reading. I actually pushed way too much through. It was done reading well before I was done forcing stuff through it. All right, so at Flame Out, I basically added two packs of the proper seltzer nutrient. This stuff, guys, really is incredible. It's definitely, uh, it's not cheap. I feel like they're probably charging a little bit more for this than they should. You can buy all these ingredients separately and assemble your own, but it is super convenient. So I dumped that in the kettle and I just stirred it in to make sure it was well incorporated. It did change the overall color of the sugar water. Here we are in real time. The Jaded Hydra chiller is hooked up to my hose and it's just running cold water through. And this is real time, no YouTube magic or Bradley being sneaky or shady. This is actually how fast it's taking temperature off. It really blew off temperature insanely fast at the upper end. Once I got below 100, it definitely slowed down. We can see that right here. It's still going down a little bit. It'll drop down to 104 in a second. I think it's based on my groundwater, but its initial performance is really mind blowing. And it's really something to behold if you've never tried one before. Here's a quick look at the sugar water. I think I'm gonna call it hummingbird food because that's what it is at this point. I'm transferring it into the Brewer's Hardware jacketed unit tank. Look above for the review. Now it's time for the real star of the show, the Omega Lutric Vic yeast. This stuff is just amazing. It fermented out super quick. And I'm just dumping it in the top of that four inch tri-clamp. Only pitched one pack into around 13 gallons. Next up, if you're used to the tri-clamp life, just tightening up that top tri-clamp with the pressure relief, getting this guy ready for its super quick fermentation. Here we are fermenting with my heated fermenter setup. Link above for the video. It worked out super well and fermented nice and warm. Just look at that fermenter, how shiny it is. 
nowhere to hide. I, I really do enjoy using this one especially. Just about time to rack off the bottom and go to secondary fermentation. I've never made a seltzer before, but it definitely produced, I would say, less of a yeast slurry than a beer. What do you guys uh, think is going on in your brews? I definitely noticed that and thought it was interesting. But here I am, uh, always using a diaphragm valve. I'll link that below in the video description. A diaphragm valve is really one of the easiest ways to rack out of a unit tank. You can control everything. You're not going to make a mess. You don't have to use a 90 or anything. It just goes super smooth and slow. Or if you want to be crazy, open all the way and make a mess. Second to the last step after a proper cold crash, kegging. All right, guys, so that's it. Truthfully, making hard cells for is really simple when compared to making a full-on batch of all-grain homebrew. So one thing I left out footage-wise is I use these Brewer's Best uh, flavors. I used one that is blood orange and one is watermelon. One of my friends, Tyler at Simi Valley Homebrew, suggested the watermelon was pretty good and she was right. Uh, they work to treat. I literally just dumped these into the full kegs. I had five gallon keg of each. I just dumped one in. The instruction said it was good. I didn't feel like, you know, dosing it out and getting it just right. It turns out that this actually suited everyone's palate and tasted perfectly. There was no trouble at all. I also did find that after about a week or two, it really mellowed out and it tasted natural. The first day or two to me, uh, maybe it was just in my head, but I swear to you I could taste it. It wasn't real flavor, but after a few weeks, it did just mellow right out. Now today, I've only got the blood orange left. It's still kicking around in the keg. Truthfully, it turned out really, really good. I'm just not a huge fan of hard seltzers, evidently. All right, before I pull a pint of that hard seltzer off the Kumos kegerator, I would really appreciate it if you would take the time not to subscribe and like the video. It really helps the channel out. So let's had a second to, to die down. I mean, it's, it's bubbly and it's just delicious. It has a faint, you know, kind of nose of blood orange on there. And this came out to about 6%, so it will sneak right up on you. It's definitely snuck up on me as well as some of my friends and family in the not too distant past. Like I said before, I actually followed Omega's recipe. I did my own water profile, but the recipe is on their website. I just doubled it for my batch size. This isn't something you guys have done yet. Where have you been? I really recommend you check out the Lutra and their uh, proper pitch seltzer nutrient are really, they're awesome. I had no trouble at all. I fermented this guy nice and warm. It fermented out quick. And it was honestly very, very clear when I transferred it into kegs. Obviously I did a really cold, cold crash in the Brewer's Hardware Jackulated Insulated Glycol Unitank. That thing is just a beast. Really, anything with cooling performance with a glycol jacket is gonna beat coils every day of the week, hands down, and that it did. So, before I get too hammered, remember, this has been Bradley. Home brewing is good, and I'll see you real, real soon.